Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Autodesk Virtual Academy, brought to you by Kativ Technologies. I'm Nigel Lombayek, your host for today and all days, Customer Success Manager here at Kativ Technologies. And today, I'm joined by my good friend here, Jose Paredes, Clara. Now, yeah. Nice. Um, so, yeah, since last time, Jose's oh, acquired another say. name. Yeah. Um, so, congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank um, you. Today, we're going to be going over, you know, 20 volt tips in... Oh, around 20, 20 minutes, minutes or so. Um, and this kind of stemmed from our um, Inventor series of webcasts that Eric Paul has been doing of uh, 20 Inventor Tips in 20 Minutes. He's done yeah. two of those. He's actually working on the third one as we speak downstairs. Uh, the first one we have here coming up is Save Searches. Uh, again, pretty basic here, but um, what you'll see is uh, in Vault, you have what are uh, searches. So it's one of the most abundant uh, tools that you can have, again, because you have properties, you have everything attached to files uh, in Vault. So you can go ahead and select the properties that you want. Uh, one of the, the more famous ones here is, I want to see what's checked out by me. So you're going to go ahead and do uh, checked out by, and then in this case, I'm signed in as administrator. And I'm going to add this criteria here, and I'm going to do a find now. So. It looks like I have no items checked out to me here. Nice. But let's say at the end of the day, I want to find out uh, what I do have checked out, what I'm still working on. I can go ahead and save this search here, uh, the save button at the top, and give it a name. So check out by administrator. And then you'll see this check mark down here that says save as a folder. Uh, what that does is it'll add it as a shortcut on your left hand side here uh, for you to use pretty, pretty easily. So if I hit, even if I don't hit save as a folder, we'll see, we'll be able to access it. So I'm going to hit OK. You'll see that I have a search here. Uh, you see that I added a shortcut on the left-hand side, checked out by administrator. Every time I click it, it runs it. Or if I don't want to save it as a shortcut, I can go back into our find uh, window here and then open up a search, which will bring us this window here, which shows us all of our saved searches. A pretty handy tool. Um, just to, to keep in your back pocket um, when, when doing searches, especially searches um, that are pretty, pretty robust here. Like you can add different criteria. You can have like six lines down here of, of uh, criteria. And if you don't want to add that every time, you can go ahead and save the search. Yep. And then there's like a ton of Booleans in there too. So like you can do a ton of stuff. Yeah. So, uh, searches in general, I would say is uh, a tip in itself. Just go ahead and um, start using those with the properties. But with searches, uh, our next tip here is just in the options that you can do with these searches in general. Uh, when you notice when I saved my search there, uh, what it did is it automatically uh, gave me this save as a folder option. Again, you can turn that on and off manually every time. But if you're finding 90% of the time, you don't need to save it as, as, a, as a shortcut on your left-hand side. When you go into options, turn that off. Uh, once you turn that off, and then you try to save a search, you'll see that it, by default, it'll uh, not try to save it as a folder. Uh, the other options that we have here is search subfolders. If you're only searching in the main folder uh, for that location, you can go ahead and turn that off. And then latest versions only. Um, if you're looking for a previous file, uh, file version inside your vault, you can turn this off uh, and it'll pretty much give you the results of all the files that match that criteria, whether it be, you know, older versions or um, newer versions as well. Uh, one caveat there that you have with find latest versions, you cannot save the search at that point just because um, you know the, the, the save as folder option uh, is real time. So it doesn't want to go back in time when, when you save the search. Moving on here to the next one. Uh, have you ever been working in Vault and not know exactly where you know th this file is located in respect to your local computer? Uh, if you're working with with Vault, you know that um, yes, the files do exist inside of the Vault, but in order to work on them, you need to download them to the to your local drive and work on them that way. Well, if you go into Tools and then Options, you have an option here to show your folder working location or working folder location. Sorry about that. Once I hit OK, you'll see that it actually shows up at the top here. It'll pretty much tell you where this uh, folder is located in respect to your C drive or um, you know, your working folder in general where 
wherever you're working from. One of those files are in the computer kind of things. Yep, exactly. This one's a big one. This one might take me a little longer to uh, get working here, but uh, a lot of our customers actually come back to us here and ask us about uh, copy design. Uh, a lot of you that are working in professional and work group, um, whenever you do a copy design, um, you'll notice um, that it does not look like this, especially in the newer versions. After 2017, Nanjo, I believe. Um, might be after, I think it's 2017 and newer is when it changed. Yeah, so after 2017, you get a, um, you get a, uh, a different uh, copy design there. Uh, well, turns out there are some settings that you can go ahead and change inside of uh, Vault itself. Um, you, it does require some level of admin access on your computer. You're actually going into one of the uh, configuration files for Vault and actually changing the value of, you know, uh, new copy design to not uh, be turned on. And it'll actually give you this, um, this interface here. Uh, I talked earlier about Vault Basic having an advantage over workgroup and professional. This is actually where this comes in. Uh, if you're using Vault Basic, this is automatically turned on, whereas workgroup and professional is where you, get the new copy you will get the new copy design. So. Uh, it's, it's a lot of steps here on how to switch this out here. I just, um, for this tip, I wanted to make sure it got out there. There is going to be something that we're going to send out after the webinar that uh, shows the, the details and the steps on how to do this. Um, so look for that email. You'll, you'll be able to see that afterwards. Yep. If you want to uh, get a head start, if you Google old copy design <laughs> onto this vault, you'll pull it up. Um, and like Jose said, you need some level of administrator access to be able to reach it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I personally like the new copy design, but some people are used to the old one. Mm -hmm. Um, so there it is. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things of preference here. Um, you know, um, and, and the thing that here is we don't know how long it's going to be supported to, to switch back to the old one. So yeah, that's, that's the other thing. yeah. So, uh, but for now it still works. This is Vault 2019 and we're able to, to go back to the old copy design. Update views. Uh, have you ever tried to view one of your files inside of Vault? Uh, or the thin client. Or the thin client <laughs> like this and found out that, hey, I actually can't. Well, let's go back to my Vault here and find one of those. Hey, this one right here it says I don't have one, right? Well, you have an option here. You can go ahead and hit update here, um, but there's a couple of options that you have. One says update locally, one says queue update. Uh, I have run into many customers that aren't familiar with what queue update does, which is why I added this tip. Uh, update locally will uh, um, generate the, the preview file automatically for you on the spot. Uh, sometimes they may slow down your computer though. Depends on how big the file is. Exactly. So it always depends on how many you're generating and how big the file is, but it may take longer, um, which is where this queue update um, option comes from. So I'm going to set my option to queue update. And you'll notice that nothing happens yet. Well, this actually takes me into my next tip here. Job processor. It processes jobs. What? Yeah. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and open mine up here. Uh, and this is what a job processor is. Um, this is what it looks like, sorry. Um, but if you're, if you're working in a job processor environment, what you're doing is you're picking, uh, let's say any a computer that nobody else is using maybe, uh, somewhere off to the side. Um, all you have to do is install Vault Professional on it and you get the job processor. Uh, and it's the only job it has is to do the work um, that your computer would usually do as far as generating um, these, these preview files, updating properties overnight, any of those things that you want to offload and not slow down your computer, you can have the job processor do. Um, so again, this is something that we've run across with our customers that uh, aren't aware that job processor exists. They end up spending a lot of time when checking in their files, generating these preview files. It slows down their computers and you know, it, it gets frustrating at some point. So job processor is actually one of the, one of the um, solutions to this. Yeah, um, and I want to iterate too, right? Jose kind of went over that really quickly. We get dozens of phone calls a week of people saying, 
I, slow computer. Yeah, it takes me in. 30 minutes to check in a file. And usually the first thing that someone does, especially if it's a large assembly, is turn off the visualization file attachment. Well, yes, that will speed up the time it takes exactly. to check in the file, but ultimately down the road, you might have some issues with people being able to visualize this thing in a thin client, or you just being able to visualize this thing in a full vault client. Um, and that's where the job processor comes in. If you want to offload that Dwif creation yep. to the thin client, it makes a ton of sense. The, yeah, for the thin client to the job processor, it, it's definitely um, a solution that a lot of our customers have implemented here. Uh, but you'll notice I submitted that job maybe two, three minutes ago, uh, and nothing showed up here. Um, one of the settings that a job processor has is it checks for new jobs every 10 minutes. Uh, but a tip within the job processor itself, if you need something generated uh, right away, what you can do is actually pause the job processor, uh, going into file and hitting pause, and then resume. As soon as you resume, that's when it automatically checks for jobs. And you'll see that it picked up the one that I generated that I asked for earlier. You saw that I actually did it pretty quick. Um, and now if I refresh my screen here, you'll see that I'll have a preview file generated this time. So that was the job processor. Uh, and then next step here uh, actually uh, uses the job processor that we just job processor that we just learned about and um, the save searches that we had earlier. Uh, let's say, um, you know, like Nigel said, a lot of our customers turn off that uh, Dwif creation on check-in, which means they have a bunch of files in there that don't have one generated. I have a customer with thousands of files. Exactly. And they're like, we don't want to do a one by one. And this was like the solution to that support case. So I just want to reiterate that one more time. If you have turned off Dwif creation on your vault, and you have hundreds or thousands of files that need updating, this is the fastest way to do it. <laughs> yeah, so what I ended up doing is I, I created a, a save search that you'll see here uh, as it loads, but you know, it's basically there is a property inside a vault that uh, tells us whether there is a visualization file generated for this file. Uh, and what it means by that is basically the top, the latest version, does it have a visualization file? Um, you see visualization attachment is none. Well, there are three parts which I selected here that uh, say that. So I went ahead and, um, and did a safe search for that. Uh, and now what I can do is actually go into tools, oops, sorry, actions, and then there's an update view option. So if I try to update the view, you'll see that I have an update locally and queue update uh, option here. But that's only because I have one file selected. You'll notice that once I select more than one, if I go into actions again and do update view, my update locally uh, option is grayed out. That just means you'll need a job processor in order to have um, all these jobs sent over there and generated. Um, but we'll go ahead and do that. Yeah. Shout out to Andy who you know sent us a message saying it took them three days to run all of them. Yeah. They had a lot. I bet. But uh, yeah. Glad we could help out. And you see, you see here, it just ran through all three here. Again, if the more you have, the longer it'll take. But if I actually jump out of here and jump back in, you'll see that there's no more uh, IPTs in here that don't have a visualization file. It'll pretty much help you keep track of it as you go. Yep. <clears throat> Non-compliant files. So this one's specifically, uh, I would say, useful for, for Vault Professional here. Um, if we if you look at the slide here, you'll see that there's uh, something that I highlighted here. It looks like a, a tag with a little red circle on it. Um, what this means is the file is non-compliant. The properties themselves are not what they uh, what the vault wants them to be. So you'll see that I have um, this assembly here. If I look at the properties down here, you'll see more big red circles. All this means uh, is there are properties in here that are associated to this file that don't have a um, don't match the criteria that we set for them. You'll notice that in here it says, uh, you know, there's a policy error. Uh, this property requires a value. So if there are mandatory files in there, um, mandatory properties in there, um, when you don't have them filled out, you'll get this little tag. It's a quick way to, to know what's, what uh, needs to be updated or what needs stuff added to it. Um, and like uh, I mentioned earlier, in Vault Professional, you can actually set lifecycle state changes 
to be um, dependent on compliancy of the pro of the properties pretty much. Um, it, it can't make these transitions unless all the properties that are required are filled out. So there's a neat little trick there that you can um, always keep track of which properties need to be updated. Yep. <clears throat> this one's a, a good one. We always hit on, on training here. Uh, it's my favorite bookmark on my computer. Exactly. What do these icons mean? Uh, and unless you've memorized them, you at some point, like Nigel said, it's a bookmark. No way. <laughs> you're in there, you're, you see one, you're like, hey, I've never uh, seen this icon before. Yeah, and you don't want to search like, what does question mark underneath exclamation point inside a circle on top of a triangle? Like, mean, yeah. So, describing some of these is sometimes like super confusing. And so it's easier just to match the picture with the exactly. ones on this icon reference. And uh, again, the, just like the, uh, the um, copy design and then uh, we'll see another one earlier later. Uh, these are some links that we'll go ahead and send out to you guys um, to make sure that you guys have them in general. Yep. But you know, uh, as far as icons go, you know, uh, one of the more common one here, common ones that you'll see is these two red arrows in in a circular motion. What does that mean? And you'll notice that it uh, it uh, on the screen it tells you that the file version that you have on your computer locally does not match the one from the vault. So an Easy, the easiest way to get rid of that, and we'll actually go through it here, is uh, to do a get. So what I'm gonna do here is actually change these properties here, change one of them on off screen here. So as soon as I change the file inside of Vault, it is now newer than the file that I had downloaded. And you'll see that I have these double red arrows here. Well, the easiest way to get rid of it, um, um, to get, go back to the normal icon would be to right click and do a get. Hit OK. And you'll see that it goes back to its regular white circle, which um, if we look at the PowerPoint, uh, oh, it's not there, but it pretty much means, hey, you have this file downloaded on your computer and it is uh, matched up with your um, with your vault. Yep, and that's the vault icon reference if you want to get a head start. Yeah, what that looks like. Next time, uh, next slide here. Uh, we talked. Uh, I did it right now off screen. Updating user defined properties. Um, if we go into our vault, and um, pretty much for any file here, you you always uh, you'll get a list of the properties on the right hand side. Um, now I have worked with um, a customer in the past who mentioned that in Vault Basic you don't get this panel, so. It'll, it'll be a little difficult to, to, to do this one in Vault Basic. You'd basically, uh, you'd have to do it uh, through iProperties at that point. So this tip wouldn't, wouldn't work so well for Vault Basic. But let's say I have three files in here that I want to change the properties on. Um, well, if I hit this little pencil here for Edit Properties, it brings up a window where I can go ahead and edit these properties. So let's say I want all these to match. Um, you know, I want to change the name of the author on all these files. I could go in and type in my new name and then go to the next one and type in my new name. But something really cool about this property editing um, uh, window that we get from Vault is it acts like a spreadsheet. So if you hold that corner down like you would in Excel uh, and then drag it down, it actually copies those values over. Another neat thing is if you have a property um, that you want to, to match um, somewhere else. So let's say I want um, my name to show up in the description as well. I can go ahead and select the whole column that I have there, hit Control C and literally Control V it into another column. Um, I have had customers ca call in and ask, hey, is there a faster way to, you know, um, move one property from one column to another or update mass properties at the same time? Um, well, the answer is yes. Uh, if you, you can select all the files that you want and update them at the same time, or if you're missing a couple that are in a different location, you can go ahead and add um, the, all the files that you need onto the same page and I'll modify them at the same time. So once you hit okay here, it pretty much goes through and updates all the properties. 
and gives you a summary of what you have. Creating a folder. So going, um, if, if you've been working with Vault in a while, you know that um, you need to, in order to make sure that your file ends up in the right location inside of Vault, you need to either have it already created in here uh, in Vault and then um, make sure that it copies down to your, to your local computer or you create the folder in your local computer and then have it go up into the Vault. Well, one thing you'll notice here is I'm gonna go ahead and um, look at the working folder location that I have here, which would be C drive underscore jumpstart designs elevation one. And then if you look at my working folder here, which I bring this up, there is no Word documents folder. So you see that it's not there. Well, I want to go ahead and create some documents. I want to make sure that they're saved in the right location. Um, but for some of our customers, this folder structure gets a little complicated. You know, it branches out in a bunch of different ways. Luckily for me, it just, it's, it's one nice path. But in order to avoid, avoid any mistakes or creating a completely separate branch by accident, what you can always do is right click on the folder that you want to create and hit go to working folder. What that'll do is that'll actually go ahead and open up, open up a Windows Explorer uh, window and you'll see that it created that folder for me automatically. Now I can go ahead and save my files in there and pretty much guarantee that I'm putting them into the, the right location inside of the vault. Uh, what's nice about this, uh, um, this workflow is um, if I were to create a new folder here and say, uh, AV, create an AVA folder. If I create a folder um, in my working on my computer and then um, upload that file into the vault, it'll also create that folder uh, in your vault. So it works both ways. Uh, but like I mentioned, be careful with it um, because one, uh, you know, misspelling on your path or something like that will completely duplicate your path and, and create a folder somewhere you don't want it to. Right. Shortcuts. So we just learned about, um, you know, creating this folder, going to working folder, stuff like that. Well, um, just like Eric Paul showed you some shortcuts with, um, you know, Inventor, there are shortcuts with Vault. Uh, one of the cool, two cool ones that I like to highlight here is go to working folder. We just uh, talked about that and how you can um, create this folder structure on your local computer to use. Uh, well, Another one that we have here is uh, move to folder. So let's say I don't want this assembly in here anymore. Um, yes, I can go ahead and expand this folder structure here and uh, drag and drop it, which is again, a good, um, a, a nice thing about Vault. Again, if you're using Vault and you move files, it'll go ahead and reassociate any, any connections that that file had to, to other files inside of Vault. So um, there's nothing wrong with dragging and dropping. Yeah. Don't do that in Explorer. Yes. Please. <laughs> Don't do that in like Microsoft Explorer, like your regular file explorer. It'll break all of the links for your assemblies and drawings. Um, if you want to move it to another folder in your computer, um, do that from like a save dialog, please. Yeah. Yeah. And that, again, um, if you just started using Vault or anything like that, it's it's one of the probably one of the main reasons that um, you can, working in Vault is is nicer. If you have moved any files in the past, you know that um, once you open it up again, it's like, hey, I can't find it, and you have to go on this uh, wild goose chase unless you know exactly where you saved that file. But uh, inside of Vault, again, you can drag and drop without any issues. Or if you hit Control Shift V, like we saw in uh, the shortcuts there, you can actually select the folder that you want it to go into and have it move it there automatically. Uh, again, autodesk.com slash uh, forward slash shortcuts uh, is a main page that you'll see. This is similar to the URL that you saw in Eric's AVA, except his went straight to Inventor. Turns out if you try to go straight to the Vault one, it does not work because uh, the URL changes completely. So if you go to shortcuts, uh, it'll it's 
pretty much a main hub of shortcuts. You can choose to go to Vault, Inventor, pretty much any other product in there. Um, so check that out if you want um, to, to go ahead and see not just Vault shortcuts, but any of the other ones. Yeah, learn hotkeys. Cleaning up. This is also one of the ones that I like to mention on our training here. Um, when I explain working folder to new users or um, even some old users that uh, take training, um, I like to compare the working folder to the downloads folder um, on your computer. Uh, if you're downloading files from, the, uh, from your web browser, once you download them, they all go into this long downloads folder and pretty much stays like that until you go in and clean it up uh, I'm guilty of that as well. If you look at my downloads folder here, you'll see that um, there are many files that I download. Um, so what what the nice thing is that Vault actually provides a tool for this. Uh, it's called it's called the Workspace Sync. So if you click the, on that, what it does, it'll actually look at your working folder and um, look for files that it, it's uh, either able to uh, download and update on your computer or remove them from um, from your working folder. In this case, you'll see that Jumpstart Elevation and just Jumpstart IDW, they are located on my folder, in my working folder. But since I moved them, Vault is telling me, hey, these don't belong there anymore. Uh, we can go ahead and, um, and move them out of there. You'll see that the criteria that, that it shows here is deleted from Vault. It just means that with the location that, it, um, that it's placed in right now is no longer the location that they're on. So therefore, they need to be removed. Um, you can go ahead and set the different criteria in here as to, you know, how long, how old these files need to be in order to be deleted. Um, managed files means files that are inside the vault already. Uh, unmanaged files are pretty much all other files that aren't inside of the vault at all, but are still on your working folder. You can choose the different um, types there, as well as any exceptions that you want to go ahead and add. If there's a textures folder or a templates folder that it's like, hey, I want to delete this every time. Well, you can go ahead and just add that templates folder. Tell it, hey, this is an exception. It's fine the way it is. So if I do this, just hit finish, you'll see that it, it downloaded new files for me as well as deleted old files from my computer. Um, and again, this is important because if you don't clean up your working folder, just like your downloads folder, it'll pretty much fill out, fill up. Um, and um, take up a lot of space on your computer there. Views. Uh, so this is, again, one of the, uh, I would say, one of the more basic things that, that we go in here. Um, if you look at the different properties that you have in here, again, this is pretty much um, default um, the way it comes. But in, all, in the case of a lot of our customers, a lot of, uh, some of these properties aren't relevant. Well, if you right click on the, the column header here, you get an option to customize your views. And you'll come up with um, basically uh, fields, custom filters, um, other settings and, and resetting your view in general. So fields in this case is just properties that you can, you want to see in your window. You can go ahead and choose them, um, choose the ones that you wanna see or remove the ones that you don't wanna see. Uh, and you'll notice that um, the list itself is from top to bottom, uh, equivalent to the, the view um, left to right. So the closer it is to the top, the further left it is, the closer it is to the bottom, the further right it is. Um, and again, this is just um, a real easy way of seeing all the relevant information for your files. We're getting rid of irrelevant exactly. information. And, and just customizing that for yourself. <clears throat> Next thing is an option here um, as far as uh, viewing previews and not thumbnails. So um, if you notice, and um, some of you that I have been working with Vault uh, may notice as well, when I click on a file, it automatically shows me the preview of the file. So it shows me the DWF that was generated for it. Uh, well, this is because I have an option turned on um, in Vault under document preview here. You can actually uh, set the list of files that you want to see. So I have, you know, Autodesk with files previewed here. If I turn this off and hit OK, if I jump over to a different file, 
you'll see that the views are changed now. It just shows me a thumbnail and waits for me to click on it to load it. Um, this is just uh, pretty much a personal preference here. Um, it might take a little longer if you automatically load the previews, but um, you can go ahead and change that for, uh, you know, pretty much the different, the different uh, extensions that you have in here. If you want Word documents to automatically preview whenever you click on them, you can go ahead and turn that on. Uh, and pretty much you'll see this one. This one. Yeah, anybody know it was actually in the Word documents. Um, pretty much it'll preview the, um, the file itself if you wanted to scroll through it um, at a glance. Comments in view. So if uh, you notice when you're working with Vault, whenever you check in or check out, it allows you to make a comment on that check in and check out. Well, a lot of the times what we suggest is with these comments to make sure that they um, it are pretty much a, a quick summary of what was done to that file during, during that, that checkout or during that session. Well, you can go ahead and turn this on um, so that the comments show right under the file automatically without you having to go through a history of it. Uh, you'll notice that if I'm in history for that comments, initial load during training, well, that comment shows up here. You can actually click on this auto preview um, button at the top. If you turn it on or off, it'll start showing the comments pretty much. And it is uh, in respect pretty much to, to each folder that you're uh, looking on or the view itself. So if I turn it on here, you'll see that a bunch of these files were, were um, you know, were changed with, with a property edit um, the last time they were created. So again, um, with obsolete, if you're using Vault Professional and you have a lifecycle state, uh, you can add automatic comments. Well, for obsolete, you, you know that it's no longer in production. So that's the comment that it'll show. And again, it's, it's auto preview here. You can go ahead and turn that on or off. Uh, this one is um, stemming from, again, from Eric, uh, Eric's AVA here. He showed you how to, how to export to pretty much the Autodesk viewer or the, the cloud there. Uh, you can do the same in Vault. If you click on a part here, you can actually share a view, uh, pretty much creating it on, um, on the cloud for, for you to share with clients. They're not editable. They're just viewable at that point. So, um, you know, it's, it's a pretty handy tool here to do. Um, and if, again, under view, you can actually turn on the panel that shows you any shared views that you might have generated. You'll see here that I do have one and I can go ahead and open it up inside my browser to, to view. So, again, pretty cool tip. You can do it in Inventor, you can do it in Vault, depending on where you wanna uh, show your, your, your part, but I can open it up in a browser and again, just, just view it there or share it again with, with clients that need to see the files. This one is, um, I think, a pretty important one that, that doesn't get touched on very well. Um, you know, some of the functionality inside of Vault, it, it may not come by default. Uh, a lot of our customers ask for certain things and uh, Vault doesn't do it natively. Uh, one of them, the ones that I want to talk about here is comparing drawings uh, in Vault. Um, they all come from the App Store. So basically, Autodesk has an App Store for Vault that you can go ahead and look at the different tools that are, that are available for it. Uh, and you have um, this button up here. It's called the, the Autodesk App Store Manager. What it does is it actually shows you the apps that you have installed. So you'll see that I have a drawing compare here for 17, 18, and 19. Or um, what it also does is it has a link directly to that uh, app store itself. Pretty much go in and look at the different tools that are available. Now these tools are not um, developed by Autodesk. They're pretty much third party apps that Autodesk has um, pretty much uh, confirmed that they work with it. So again, they don't come from, from Autodesk, but they do offer some functionality that um, that will help in your in your day to day. Um, one thing here that you can do so that that drawing compare. Um, once I installed it, I get this option to compare the drawings. If I choose version one and version four here and compare them, 
you'll see that uh, additions, basically anything that was added from version one to version four is in red and deletions will be in black. Well, I have this window here and it pretty much, you know, shows me that in version one, there was only the, these black outlines. Version four has this, these added views on it. It's, um, I think, a pretty helpful tool for our customers who, who do compare drawings a lot and, and require that tool. You can go ahead and, and uh, use that app as well. Downloading a DWIF. So um, we've been talking a lot about uh, visualization files uh, and previews. Well, uh, turns out you can have you know DWIFs in general inside of Vault. Uh, you'll see that these are generated during some ECO markups here. But pretty much the previews that you have for each file, um, they are themselves a DWIF. They're, they're actually in the same location that, that the files themselves are. But the only way you can see them is if you go into options and turn on hidden files, you'll see that there is a file that is named, named exactly like the, the preview file, that, the preview um, that it was generated for with a DWIF um, with a DWIF extension on there as well. Um, and this is nice because uh, if you don't wanna do a shared view like you do over the cloud and share that with clients, what you can also do is um, right click on the DWIF, do a get, and you'll download this uh, DWF to your computer. Uh, and that's something that you can share. Again, it's not editable um, and you're able to share it with, yep. your, with your clients. Now. Same concept to turn them off. If you wanna turn that off, it's under view. Yep. Or options, options and then you want to turn off show um, hidden files. Hidden yep. files. Yep. So um, that's downloading drifts. Um, second to last one ha we have here is uh, a doozy as well. Pack and go. Uh, we just talked about sharing drifts with with our customers. You know if that's necessary. Well, what you can also do is pack and go straight from the vault. Um, so I'm going to click on this drawing here wait for my vault to respond because it's being cranky. And then if you go to file, you have an option to pack and go. Uh, you'll see that it pretty much grabs the drawing, the assembly and the part that's necessary for it. You can go ahead and do this directly from the vault. You don't have to download them um, there. You have the same options that you would in Inventor. But one of the options that I like here is, again, we mentioned DWIFs that we can share with our customers. Well, if you go into settings, uh, you have an option to include these DWIFs when you when you do the pack and go or only get the glyphs the visualization files if i do that what it does is it actually only gets me the the visualization files that i want to share with a customer if i want to do a pack and go for everything put that in a location and then literally send it out you don't have to worry about the the assembly or the no ip exactly you can go ahead and just uh, send them the glyphs this way it's a pretty cool tool um and and it works within within uh vault directly. <clears throat> All right. And then our final one here is know your environment. Um, yes, the environment here uh, that you want to know um, is actually kind of kind of hard to see if you if you're not looking for it. At the bottom of your of your browser, you'll notice that there's this toolbar here. Pretty much um, what this does is it'll show you the server that you're working on, the vault that you're working in, and then the user that you're signed in as. These are all pretty pretty um, neat things to know, especially if you're working with multiple users. Um, we have some customers that have administrator um, users that they use for, for settings changes. Um, and then they have their own personal engineering users. Um, uh, it really, really sucks when you're signed in as an administrator and you're doing all these changes and you're making all these changes and you realize that you were doing them as, as administrator and you might have done something that you weren't supposed to. Maybe you're not allowed to delete and then you delete by accident. Well, deletes are pretty permanent unless you have a, a backup from like... The, Before the delete. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, deleting by accident is definitely something you don't want to do. So it's always a good thing to double check that you're logged in to the right vault, um, the right username, um, to, to make sure that you have the right permissions there. Yep, we have a lot of customers with multiple servers. They have like test servers and they have test vaults or they have two vaults. Make sure you're in the right one. Yeah, especially <laughs> replication. If you're, you notice something is really, really slow and you realize, hey, I'm logged into the vault in Chile. Well, 
that'll give it to you. That, that'll do it for you. Yeah, I'm in Minnesota or whatever, and I'm logged into Chile. Not um, and again, that that was pretty much the the last tip I have here. I have a slide here for Nigel to go over. I think that's everything that we're going to cover. If I didn't cover, you know, your question, please reach out to someone here. Um, questions at Kativ.com. I'd like to thank everybody for uh, for joining us today. I'd also like to thank the Jonas Brothers again for reuniting in 2019. Shout out to those guys. Um, and uh, we'll see you next week at 10 a.m. Pacific on Thursday. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your day.